Jeff Rowe from Two Hacks Garage. Well, if you saw in a couple of videos ago, I introduced two small block Chevy projects that I have going on. This one here, it's a 311 cubic inch engine that's going to go in my Nostalgia front engine dragster. And there's going to be a 292 small block Chevy build that I'm doing, but that's going to be covered in a separate video series. So what is this engine block here? This was originally a 67 casting 327 302 block. It's a two bolt small journal. It's fully machined, it's ready to assemble, and I have almost all the parts to make a complete engine. But before we get assembling, guys, what we need to do, the first step we're gonna do in this is measure main bearing clearance before we install the crankshaft. I know a lot of guys use plastic gauge. I've done it in the past. It's a good method to get you that ballpark bearing clearance number, but it's not 100% accurate. In order to do that, guys, it's not too bad to do. Really what you need is you need your main bearings, uh, some micrometers and a dial bore gauge and from there it's just a lot of math It's that race engine nerdy math. I always talk about so this is going to be another one of those videos um, It's not too terribly hard to do you just got to take your time get your tools set up, right? And you know what? It's not too bad at all. So in this video, we're not going to actually get this crankshaft in there All I'm going to do is show you how to measure main bearing clearance with your micrometer and a dial bore gauge all right, guys, so what are you going to need to do this? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You're going to need your crankshaft that's going to go in the engine. You're going to need a micrometer. You're going to want to use one that has the distance uh, between that and the size of this crankshaft. So I know that the main journals on this from the factory are 2300, and this is a factory uh, reproduction forged steel uh, unit from Eagle, uh, but I'm going to measure those. So if you look here, I chose the two to three inch. Like I said, a dial bore gauge, your crankshaft, you're going to need a piece of paper and a pen. And what else are we going to need? All right. So what else are you going to need? Well, you're going to need your bearings and you're going to need the bolts you're using on your main caps. And you're also going to need a torque wrench. So yeah, those are the pieces that you need to be able to do this. It's not really that hard. And the neat part about this, guys, is, is once you do it once and go through it, Tell you what, it's a very easy to be re repeatable step and you'll find out that it's much easier and much more accurate than using plastic gauge. All right, so the first step of this is actually pretty simple. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your micrometer here and you're just gonna measure each main journal. Okay, it's not too hard to do. I already have this preset. I actually went through and measured all these. The thing about it is, guys, is it's kind of the old saying of trust but verify. This is a brand new crankshaft. I went on and looked at the specs, and it says all the mains and all the uh, connecting rod journal sizes. Um, this one says all the mains are the factory standard to 300. However, I want to verify that. I want to make sure my bearing clearances are exact. So, like I said, I've already measured all this, but basically what you do is you take your micrometer, and you're gonna go on each journal and you're gonna measure it, every single one. Not too hard to do, and you're gonna read that number and you're gonna write it down. So if you look here, I write, I write everything down. Um, I have things written down. So you look here, 311 main bearing clearance, journals front to back. So I already measured them all and they were exactly at 2300, okay? So the next step is, is what we're gonna do is we're going to actually measure the bearing clearance. I'm going to show you how to do that. Because really what this is, guys, is you take your journal diameter minus your bearing measurement that we're going to take. I'm going to show you in a second. And that's going to get you your clearance. All right, so the second step of this, guys, is actually not too hard. So if you notice here, I do have my main bearings laid out. Um, main bearings on most engines, there is an upper and a lower. Um, small block Chevy is easy to identify because it's got the hole in there. Um, but if you're ever wondering on there, generally speaking, what you're going to do, and it might be hard to see on here, uh, but it's going to show you, I think right there, you see the U. That means the upper. The upper is the one that goes in the block. So that's how you can tell on that. Um, if you're ever wondering, and it's also going to tell you this uh, bearing size on that. Now, these bearings here, so if you look at this one, right, right, it's kind of hard to see, but it's got an L in there, so that's the lower. So basically what I did, if you notice, um, all of these are numbered one, two, three, four, five. So the reason I did that is quite simple. So I'm going to start with 
going in the front on journal number one, work my way back to two, three, four, and five. And what that, the reason I numbered these is, is because I'm using those bearing shells in main cap one. So when I get everything done, I wanna make sure since I measured those bearings with this cap and location one, that those bearings stay with that when I assemble it, since I know the exact clearance using physically these two bearings with that cap. Really not that hard to do. Um, I went ahead and got everything labeled, saved some time, got everything written down. So yes, you're going to need your bearings on this point and you're going to need your fasteners. And on this, um, I am using an ARP uh, main cap fastener. Nothing crazy. These are much better than stock. And you, what you're going to do is before you go anything in place, just make sure to kind of read the instructions on this because you're going to have to torque these down. So this is basically telling me 70 foot pounds, three equal stages. So this is important. Make sure you look at this. All right, so the next step is pretty simple. Um, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take, since I'm starting off at location one, you're gonna take your upper shell. If you notice it's got the hole in there and it matches the feed hole there. You're gonna wanna put that and get that put into place like this. You're gonna hear it kind of snap into place like that. So I got that into place there. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take your lower. I know it's kind of confusing because this is upside down, but your upper is actually the one in the blocks. When this face is up, that's up. This is lower. And you're going to do the same thing here. You're going to put it into place. Make sure it snaps in there, lays flat. And what I'm going to do, always make sure your main caps go in the orientation. I know this is the front one. There's an arrow. You're just going to set it in place like this. Make sure it sits in the register flat. You're going to want to torque these into place, okay? But these normally call for Molly Lube, for, but for this, I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on there. You don't want to put these in dry. So basically, it's going to dribble a little bit of oil on there, have some sort of lubrication. And for starters, all I'm going to do, I'm going to run these down. First, I'm just going to get them snug. There we have it. So the next step on this is you're going to actually want to torque that into place. And if you remember the paperwork, you want to follow the torque sequences on that. So this is telling me what you want to do is torque this down to 70 foot pounds right there and three equal steps the reason you're doing that is you want to get your bearing clearance and a replication of it actually being installed you don't want anything loose all right so i'm just going to use a pretty much a light duty torque wrench since this is only you know 70 pounds it says three equal steps so i'm actually going to go 25 then to 50 and then to 70. Okay, I'm going to take her up to 70, or, or sorry, 50 on my next one. There we go. Now it's calling for 70. 
I do have a much better torque wrench than this. This is just kind of a light duty one that I'm using for the demonstration. Click that into place. All right, there we go. So yes, get it torqued into place with your bearings in there and that's ready to go. Let's go on to the next step. All right, the next step actually isn't too bad at all. So we used our micrometer to measure each of those journals. And what we did was we wrote this down. Um, I did change this paperwork up a little bit and I'll explain why in a little bit. So I measured all those journals and got that wrote down, Use that micrometer to do that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna set your micrometer to the first main journal that we're working on. So I set that to two, 300. Luckily, all of them are the same, so I can actually leave this static. If those journal sizes were different, what you do is for each journal, you would set your micrometer to that size. Well, like I said, I got lucky and all of them are two, 300. So that's static set at two, 300. Now what you're gonna do, and I already did this, you're gonna set your dial bore gauge up so when you put this in there, this gauge itself will zero out. And I'm looking at it right now. I've got this zeroed out. So right now that's at two, 300. My dial bore gauge is set at two, 300. So once you have your dial bore gauge set or your micrometer set, you set your dial bore gauge. So it zeroes out like obviously it's not right now, but when it's in there, it's actually on zero. Now we can go take our measurement. All right, real quick. I did change my paperwork up a little bit. Sorry, really early morning brain still halfway asleep. Um, like I said, I originally I said journal minus bearing size equals your clearance. Um, that's not 100% correct. It's actually your inner diameter bearing size installed minus your journal to get your clearance. And that's what we're actually measuring is the inner diameter of the bearing, which I'll show you here real quick. So what you're doing, the inner diameter of this bearing here, you're going to get this measurement, but it's actually going to show you the clearance. And I'll show you that in a second, but it's this inner diameter size here. minus the diameter of your crank, get you your clearance. And that's actually what we're measuring. Sorry about that. Always admit my mistakes, but that's what we're measuring. And we're gonna show you actually, when we do this, it's gonna tell you the clearance. And what you do is you take that clearance and you add it to you know here, and that's gonna tell you that inner diameter. It's not exactly 100% needed, but it is that race nerdy math that I always like to have on hand. It might come in handy. So yeah. Sorry about that, but here we're going to do is we're going to show you how to get this number right here. All right, so this step is actually pretty simple to do. What we're going to do is we're going to use our dial bore gauge. And what you're going to do is you're going to actually put this in here at like a 12 to 6 clock. And you're going to rock it back and forth until you that needle moves and you know goes to a point where it wants to stop, goes up, starts coming back. So that middle point reading, and I'll show you here in a second, is what you want to record. However, you got to be careful here because if you see here, this bearing here is grooved and you got that hole, you want to stay out of that. The top on this one doesn't have that. So my target area is going to be the center right here on 12 and 6. Now, your bearing clearances on this side are also going to be a little bit different. But for the clearances, that measurement we need is going to be here to here, 12 and six. Okay, real quick, before we do this, you see that zero right there. So when that needle goes to there, that is my preset at two, 300. Okay, now if that needle goes past that zero into the positive area, that actually means that hole is smaller because what it's doing is it's squeezing this more right here. But if it goes to the right side of that, if you want to call it negative, and it's really not negative, it's just kind of confusing, that's going to be a larger number. So that means that's two, 300 there. If you start going back this, that means that hole is bigger. And that's what we're measuring. That's your clearance. So if you look here, that's a thousandths, that's two thousandths, three thousandths, four thousandths, five thousandths, and each one of the smaller tick marks, that's a ten thousandths. So that's what we're going to measure right now. 
All right, so I'm going to take my initial measurement on this, and you, you kind of want to take your time, play around with it. Like I said, I want to target the middle of that bearing area in there to the top. Like I said, I'm going to rock it till it wants to come back. And that's about right. It's about right there. So that's telling me, if you look at the tick marks, I'm sitting at, whoop. Got in that hole, that's what you want to not do. Get that back in there. Right there. So I'm sitting at one, two, two and a half thousandths on that journal right there. Now if you see, you turn this, play around with it. It's going to be about the same. Yeah, right there two and a half thousandths on that front main journal. So we're gonna go record that number. Okay, so on the first one, what I did was I wrote down that clearance number on there, I added it to the journal size, and that actual bearing inner diameter, that's your number right there. Like I said, this isn't really necessary, this is what we need. These are the two important numbers. But yeah, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through every single one and do that exact same exercise. And in order to do that, what you're gonna do is, well, you're gonna take that main cap off, you're gonna set all that aside, keep that in order, you're gonna grab number two and do exactly what we did on number one, and you're gonna work yourself back. And make it easier, guys, don't keep these installed because of your dial bore gauge is kind of a pain in the butt to put in there. So what you're going to want to do is uninstall that, set that aside, put number two in, do exactly what we just did. Tell you what, let's get going on that because I want to see the overall clearances on the mains. All right, well, I got everything done, and everything checked out pretty good. Um, I have two and a half thousandths on one through four on those journals, which I was kind of hoping for closer to three thousandths because it is a race engine, but two and a half thousandths is going to be just fine. Um, and on the rear one, number five, where the oil pump mounts to, it was right at three thousandths. So I'm going to call this good. Like I said, this is going in the dragster. Want a little bit extra clearance in there. Um, neat part about this is, is your clearance, I'm going to make a video on it, your clearance actually plays into your oil viscosity and sometimes choosing the right oil pump. Um, so yeah, that's how to do it. And if you look there, I got all my caps laid out, bearings installed, all numbered where they need to go with the bolts. So yeah, that's ready to go to install the crankshaft. Not too shabby, not too hard. You know what, guys? Just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, a little bit of math. Hope you learned something. And you know what, guys? Next video, we're going to install that crankshaft.